they were going over surface area and volume of spheres. Um, so the surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. There is no lateral surface area for a traditional sphere. And that's because, if you remember, whenever we first discussed what lateral surface area is, it's the area of all surfaces minus the base. Well, we don't have a base on a sphere, so this is the surface area. And then volume is 4 over 3 pi r cubed. So you just need to know what the radius is in order to deal with spheres. Now, hemispheres, which is half of a sphere, um, does get slightly more complicated. B is still the area of a base. Oops, it might help if I put an A. But in this case, it is really the area of the great circle. And all a great circle is, is the, if you take a traditional sphere like this one, it's the widest point around. So if you're thinking of like the Earth, it would be the equator. So the biggest part around a sphere. Um, so whenever you're talking about the hemisphere, it's literally this bottom part here. Um, so the surface area for a hemisphere is 2 pi r squared, because this is literally, this is this divided by 2. Like I, we just divided that whole equation by 2. But then we also have to add in that base on the bottom because now it does have a bottom to it. Um, this, however, does have a lateral surface area. This right here is the lateral surface area, just that first part without the big B. So just like in our other videos, whenever we would use the lateral surface area to come up with the total surface area, it's like that. Um, I don't think you will ever be asked the lateral surface area of a hemisphere, but just in case, that's what it is. And then the volume, if I take this and split it in half, that's 2 thirds pi r cubed. Now let's do some practice. So our radius is 5. Our surface area is 4 pi r squared. So 4 pi 5 squared. So if I do 4 times 5 squared, I get 100 pi. And then whenever I want to round that, because that's my exact answer, to round it, it's 314.16. So 100 pi or... 314.16 square meters because surface area is two dimensional. Then volume for, oops, four thirds pi r cubed. So if we do four thirds pi, our radius is five and then cubed. If you want to put this all in a calculator at one time, you want to put it all in but without the pi. So 4 thirds on my calculator has to have parentheses. If you're using an HP prime, it doesn't. It will automatically put it in a fraction form for you. But in this one, you have to put parentheses. And then you're going to multiply that times 5, but we need to cube it. So if you want to cube it on this calculator right here is what you have to press. It's like the same thing that you would put into Schoology since we um, don't have like a superscript thing. So it's right here, it's called the caret button, and it's how we raise these to any number, not just squared. And you would have to press it, and it would, I don't know if you saw that. Here, I'll do it again. So if I press the arrow, it puts a little box there that I have to fill in the number for. And then it's to the third, to, uh, oh my gosh, it's a three, sorry. Um. Now, this one gives me a crazy decimal. So if I want a perfect fraction, I hit math, enter, enter. If you um, do this on an HP Prime and you do it all in the CAS button, it will simplify it all for you. It would automatically give you 500 over 3. So this is 500 pi over 3, or and then we got to multiply it times pi. 
523.60. So it's 500 pi over 3 or 523.6. These are cubic meters because volume is three-dimensional. Now we have a hemisphere. We're just going to find the regular surface area. Like I said, you will very rarely, if ever, be asked the lateral surface area. It will almost always be the total surface area. Um, our radius for this is four and a half because that's half of nine, which is our diameter. All right, so sorry, principal cold. Um, the surface area is two pi r squared plus b. Now, I should really make that green. We don't know what our B is yet, so we need to come up with that. That's the area of the base, or the area of that big circle at the bottom, the great circle, which is pi r squared. So pi times 4.5 squared. 4.5 squared is 20.25 pi. So whenever I fill this in, it's going to be 2 pi and 4.5 squared plus 20.25 pi. Okay, so the easiest way to solve this would be to do this part first, so 2 times 4.5 squared, and then add it to here. So in other words, you would go 2 times 4.5 squared, and it would give you this number, and then you would add in 20.25. Now you can do it all at one time, but you've got to use parentheses. You would have to do it like this, two times 4.5 squared, and put that whole thing in parentheses, then plus 20.25. So um, the reason is, is that if you did it the other way, oh, it might work on this problem. It won't, your calculator doesn't know order of operations, um, but because it multiplies first, I think it'll still give you the same answer. It does. Um, that won't always be true for everything. It's just true for this one. It, if we were to do the adding before, like this, oh my gosh, it did work. Maybe you don't have to do parentheses. I proved myself wrong. So this is 60.75 pi or 190.85 and this is square centimeters. The volume is two thirds pi r cubed. Oh, I should write it out. R cubed. So two thirds pi 4.5 cubed. So on this one, you do have to use parentheses on fractions for this, 100%. It's not a fraction without division. Um, times 4.5 cubed. Okay, so it's 60.75 pi, which we just found out is also 190.85. Our volume is the exact same as our surface area. That can happen, it's just not super common. And um, this is how you know which one's surface area and which one's volume. That's why it's such a big deal. All right, so a sphere with a circumference of pi. So surface area, we need to know the radius. So our circumference is two pi r for any circle. This one tells us our circumference is pi. So in order to find our radius, we divide both sides by 2 pi. Our 2's cancel, our pi's cancel, which leaves us with just the radius. Our pi's will cancel here, which means our radius is 1 half. So our surface area is, was it 4 pi? Yeah, 4 pi r squared. <clears throat> so 4 pi and then 1 half squared. 
4 times 0.5 squared, which is 1, which means our surface area is 1 pi or just pi, or 3.14 square centimeters. Our volume is 4 thirds pi. Our cubed, so 4 thirds pi, 1 half cubed. So 4 thirds times one-half cubed. And it gives us a crazy decimal. So math, enter, enter, to give me a good fraction. So this means that it's pi over 6, or let's multiply out pi, 0 0.52. Our volume is pi over 6, or 0 0.52 cubic centimeters. And lastly, there is a hemisphere with a great circle of an area of 4 pi. Well, we still need to know our radius in order to do all of that. So area of a circle is pi r squared. It tells us the area is 4 pi. We need to divide by pi in order to solve. So the pi's here cancel, the pi's here cancel. So 4 is equal to r squared, take the square root, our radius is 2. So um, the area, oh, it already gave us the area of, it, this is our beam. I was about to find that, but it gave it to us. So our surface area is 2 pi r squared plus your b. So 2 pi 2 squared plus 4 pi. So remember, if you want to put all this in together, evidently you can just go for it. So 12 pi or, oops, 37.70. So 12 pi or 37.7 square feet. Your volume is 2 thirds pi r cubed, which means ours is 2 thirds pi 2 cubed. So 2 thirds times 2 cubed. Terrible decimal, so math enter enter. That's 16 pi over 3, or in times pi, 16.76. So we have 16 pi over 3, or 16.76 cubic feet. And we're done.